Hi, I now tell you about a finite Taylor expansion of the characteristic function which will help us in identifying the weak limit in the law of large numbers or in the central limit theorem. This lemma says the following. Suppose that we have a random variable with a finite nth moment, absolute moment, for some n. At least one. In that case, the characteristic function of this random variable has the following finite Taylor expansion. I can take the sum up to n of i t to the k over k factorial, which is not surprising, that's just the exponential function uh, Taylor uh, series or Taylor sequence, Taylor sum. Uh, times the case moment, and then there is a error term. There is an error term which is of the form i t to the n over n factorial little o of t, which depends on n. This little o depends on n. So that's the statement of this lemma. And let's prove this. Okay, so it's just a clever Taylor expansion of phi. So what is phi? Phi is the expectation of e to the i t x. And there is, I'm going to borrow a Taylor expansion in the complex numbers of e to the i t x. And that goes as follows. I'm going to do the n minus first Taylor sum, all under the expectation. So that's the first n minus 1 terms of the Taylor series for the for the exponential uh, function and then there is this particular way of writing the error term so I can take the n term here and there exists some theta 1 and some theta 2 with which the error term can be written in this way so that's something I borrow from analysis. Notice that everything is random here. Okay, we are under the expectation and so everything is random, in particular the thetas are also random. So this depends on omega as well of course as x depends on omega. Okay, so everything is random here. Okay, <coughs> but what we know is still part of the complex theorem is that the mod of theta 1 is at most 1 and the mod of theta 2 is at most 1. Okay, that's, that's the complex theorem. Okay, now we're dealing with a finite sum here. Finite sums always work with expectations. So this is further equal to the sum uh, i goes from k goes from 0 to n. I'm going to write this, okay, let's, I com I'll comment on this. Let's do it up to n. i t to the k over k factorial, so far I'm just copying that bit. Then the expectation hits the k power of x, okay? And then the expectation also hits this uh, error term. So the error term has some non-random parts to it, i t to the n over n factorial, and then I need to look at the expectation of x times, in fact x to the n times, this cosine of theta 1 t x term, and then i sine of theta 2 t x term, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract a 1 here, and this minus 1 will make up for the fact that I did a, the, my summation up to n instead of n minus 1, which I had before. So if you look at the nth term, uh, the nth term here is i t to the n, n factorial e to the x n, i t to the n, n factorial e of x n subtracted. So this minus 1 makes up for the fact that that sum goes up to n instead of n minus 1 as I had before. Now, this part here, this part here is sines and cosines of real numbers. 
uh, I didn't tell you, but these are real numbers, the iterators are real numbers. So this part here is less than or equal to 3. And if I take t to 0, then sine goes to 0, cosine goes to 1, subtract 1, the whole thing goes to 0 in t as t goes to 0. So now I can apply a dominated convergence theorem, which tells me that even outside the expectation, since x to the n is finite and doesn't depend on t, even outside the expectation, this whole thing will go to zero. Everything I have inside the expectation, okay, let me do just one more step here. Everything I have inside this expectation is in mode less than or equal to the nth power of x mod times 3, and it goes to zero with t, and therefore for any fixed n, which we are fixing now, as t goes to infinity, I have this absolute bound, and I can apply a dominated convergence and tell you that this whole business at the end, this whole business at the end, actually uh, goes to zero. I t to the n over n factorial, and then this is something that goes to zero. And I see that I did a little error here because this is little o of 1. We just see that this thing goes to 0. So this is little o of 1. It just goes to 0 with uh, 